April the 9th, 1969, and Concorde 002 is ready for her maiden flight from BAC's airfield at Filton. As in Concorde 001, no passenger seats, but 12 tons of flight test equipment. Today, the six-man crew was led by Brian Trubshaw, Director and General Manager, Flight Operations, BAC Filton, together with his co-pilot, John Cochrane. Of thousands of people concerned with the production of 002, few have awaited this moment more eagerly than those whose job it is to finally prove the aircraft in the air, the flight test crew. Already the 13 men of the flight test team have shared many months of training and preparation for testing Concords in flight. For this first flight, Concorde 002 carried 53,000 pounds of fuel, giving an all-up weight of 240,000 pounds. Concord 002 is clear to line up. Uh, Concord 002 is clear takeoff, and good luck, gentlemen. Fingers crossed. He rule. The croissant is well. Full power and reheat. At this point, Brian Trubshaw decided to turn a high-speed taxi run into a first flight. Climbing steeply, well, you can see it all. We're only watching it on the television screens. Anything that comes from the uh, from Chubby during flight reheat still on, I can see. 2,000 feet, he plans to cut reheat. This is Fairford Talk down at turn left 10 degrees, heading 280. Zero 02, you're clear to land from this approach. Future test work for Concorde will now fall into two well defined categories development and certification. After years of careful study and dedicated attention to detail, here was another thrilling and rewarding climax for the thousands of men and women working in the factories of British Aircraft Corporation and Sud Aviation, in the knowledge that the British-built Concorde flew just five weeks after her sister 001, and that two Concords are now flying.
to 002, the RAF's Red Arrows flew past in formation. Brian Trubshaw said the flight was cool, calm and collected, and that the crew enjoyed it immensely. Now came an ordeal for the flight test crew. Facing the mass of journalists, newsreel cameras, television cameras, and press photographers. We had a terrible good flight. Needless to say, you always have a good first flight, but this one really was good. The usual press conference took place at Barnwell Hall, Filton. And here, a nice touch. Trubshaw and his crew were presented with a cream cake given by world famous aviator Sheila Scott. As Concord 002 is being towed to the hangar to be prepared for her next flight, let's quote Raymond Baxter's concluding comments on BBC TV. All they want now is to forget the ballyhoo and be allowed to get on with a real job of work, proving Concord as an aeroplane, as a step to getting it into airline service.